So what we want to look at now, we've been looking at rolling without slipping or rolling motion. And uh, we want to look now at the dynamics of an object that's rolling down a hill. So let's see here, it says, let us next turn to the dynamics <clears throat> of rolling motion. Okay, so here we have an object that's got an inertia M and it's got a radius R. We don't know what its rotational inertia is, okay? It's just an object that's rolling down a hill. So let's analyze um, the forces and the torque uh, that's acting on this object. Um, so what, what we can look at first here is just the free body diagram of the center of mass. Okay, so what are all the forces that are acting on this guy? We've got gravity acting down. We've also got a normal force acting up. Okay, and if we break the gravitational force into x and y, so that's your x direction and y direction, we get this gravitational force um, component <coughs> and this gravitational force component. But at the same time, we've also got the normal uh, force, which is broken up into the friction component, the static friction component. Remember, it's not slipping, it's rolling down. So there is static friction, uh, that's pointing up, uh, up the incline, and then there's also this normal force. So if you consider what's happening now in the x direction, um, we can see that if we take, what did they take here? They took that as positive. Uh, so we've got mg sine theta, which is this, um, this gravitational force component in the x direction minus the friction force and this is equal to the acceleration of that center of mass okay so the object is accelerating down the hill and this is our force equation some of the forces in the x is mass times acceleration of the center of mass okay the problem with this though is that all this tells us about is the translational motion we also want to look at the rotational motion and in order to look at that we need to consider the sum of the torques acting on the object and we say sum of the torque acting around this geometric center which in this case would be is the center of mass so now let us draw this object but as an extended free body diagram and let's draw all the forces you can have the same forces <clears throat> but they're going to be acting at different points on the object. So this um, this normal force here that includes a friction component and, sorry, the contact force which it includes a friction component and a normal component are applied r over there. They're applied over here. So we draw them there. There's the friction component, the friction force and the normal force. And then the gravitational force is applied at the center of mass. Okay. So now the question we have is, if we are adding up all the torques that are acting, um, right, <coughs> we need to, uh, all the torque acting on this object, we need to uh, find which of these forces is a uh, also has a lever arm about the center of mass. What do you mean by that? Well, this gravitational force is acting, the line of action is passing through the center of mass, so this gravitational force causes no torque. It produces no torque because there's no lever arm. This normal component of the contact force also passes through the center of mass, so it has no lever arm and it produces no torque. The friction force, however, does produce a torque because it, is, it has a tangential component to this line and it has a lever arm. So the sum of all the external torques acting on this object is equal to the friction force times the radius. And we know that the sum of all the external torques is equal to I alpha. 
Okay. So guys, this is actually very helpful because this is this is a way that we can solve these problems is we need to consider what is happening in the x and the y direction as well as what is happening uh, in a rotational sense. So we need to consider translational motion and rotational motion. Okay. Okay. So now because the object is rolling without slipping, its rotational and translational motions are coupled. Okay, we've said this multiple times now. So, we know that the velocity of the center of mass is equal to the radius times the, uh, times the rotational velocity. Okay, this, this is a very important idea and that needs to stay with you. If we differentiate this equation, we get, if we go, if we divide by dt, divide by dt, we get this. The the acceleration of the center of mass is equal to the radius times the rotational acceleration. Okay? So, what now? Well, we know that um, if we take this and we substitute this into 1222, this is 1222. Okay? So, a center of mass is equal to r alpha. So if we if we substitute that in there, then we're going to get that the friction force is equal to i over r squared times the translational acceleration of the center of mass. Okay. Then substituting this guy into equation 1221 into here we are going to get this the acceleration the acceleration of the center of mass remember we're trying to look at the dynamics the acceleration of the center of mass is equal to g sine theta over 1 plus i over mr squared and what is this this is called your shape factor maybe uh, I'll do a video about the shape factor in I'm not sure we'll see okay so the shape factor is when you take the, in, the rotational inertia of that specific object, whatever it is, and you divide by mr squared. So you can go look at this in ele table 11.3, the shape factor. So, for example, if your in, uh, inertia is, say now you've got a disk, your, iner your rotational inertia for that disk is mr squared. So your shape factor for that would be 1 because it's mr squared divided by mr squared. If, uh, if, if you've got a cylinder, let me just get this guy. So your shape factor is i over mr squared. So if you've got a, a disk, then that is mr squared. So your c would be mr squared over mr squared is 1. If you've got um, if you've got a solid, um, uh, I've gone blank now. But you've got a solid. What is that? Uh, sorry, I've gone completely blank. My apologies. Um, anyways, for this, you've got your, your rotational inertia is half m r squared. So your c is then half m r squared divided by m r squared which is a half okay so there's um there's different ones like this and so your your c value which is your shape factor is not dependent on m and r it is dependent only on the shape it is only dependent on the shape of the object what do we mean by that well rod is it a rod <laughs> i'm sorry i've just completely gone blank there but the point is this, that if you've got a small, let's call it a rod, okay? I'm just going to call it a rod, a solid rod like that. Or you've got a large rod like that, okay? Round bar. Then the shape factor is the same for both of them. It will be a half mr squared divided by mr squared, which is a half. 
Aha, for both of these. So the shape factor for, for both of these is the same. However, for something that has a different shape, meaning it's got a different, like a, it's got a ring, okay? It's a, th there's a, there's a, 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 a thin ring like that. It's got a different um, inertia, so its shape factor is different. So that's a different shape. These two have the same shape, so they have the same shape factor. Okay. So, C, this acceleration of the center of mass, is given by this, G sine theta over 1 plus C. So the G sine theta is what we would expect for an object sliding down a ramp. Okay. And, it, and for the acceleration of a center of mass of an object rolling, you have to divide by 1 plus C. Okay, so if the shape factor is 1, then the acceleration of the center of mass of a rolling object is g sine theta divided by 2. So the acceleration is halved. Does it make sense? If your shape factor is a half, then it's g divided by 1.5. Whatever it is, as you can see, the acceleration gets reduced. It gets reduced. So the acceleration of the center of mass of an object rolling down is reduced. All right. And yeah. then um, uh, if you, you go, go and plug, plug that acceleration, acceleration back, back in, you can calculate the uh, friction force. Okay. okay. All, All right. So, so you, you can, can read up a little bit more on this and um, make sure you understand the section. Cheers.